I already have a bone to pick with you guys. It's ridiculous. You know why? Let's listen. Quiet. Do you know why? Because it's Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving, a little after one o'clock. The boys are gone. Joe is gone. The boys are gone. I get complete quiet silence for three days. Three days. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Now, why does this, why do I have a bone then to pick with you guys? I took a shower. I looked, I'm looking, trying to look nice. I put on makeup for you guys. I shaped my legs. I threw on some deodorant. I put some damn pants on. Three days of not having anyone here. Not that I wear pants anyway when Joe and the boys are here. But I was hoping this would be a true three days, not wearing pants, but I put pants on for you guys. Some of you would probably prefer if I didn't wear pants. Shoot me a message. I hope you guys are well. Uh, maybe you're watching this Wednesday or maybe on Thursday, your relatives are driving you nuts and you're faking the whole, I need to lay down, or maybe you're watching this on Friday, who knows, but hope you do and had a fabulous Thanksgiving. Joe and the boys are headed up to his sister's up north and I didn't want to go. So I'm here. I didn't want to go, but big news on why, because I need some time alone to get some stuff kind of squared away, but I'll talk about that later. Um, but basically it came down to, I didn't want to go. So, um, yeah, I thought, okay, first day, boys are gone. Let's do a video, get it out of the way. Um, Cause it's been a couple weeks. So what has been going on? Life update. Um, this past Friday, I got together with some friends of mine. We went to the casino that we go to for pool parties during the summer. A huge monsoon storm came um, into the Phoenix area and that was Ayrton's birthday, so July 30th. Um, power was knocked out. I mean, it was, it was a really good storm and the casino, which is located in Scottsdale got slammed. Um, they lost electricity at the casino and then around two or three o'clock in the morning, they actually evacuated the hotel. So it's been closed for a number of months doing repairs. And then they also decided with the time being closed that they were going to reno um, some of it. So um, hadn't been there since they had opened. And it's always a great place to gather with friends. So if you're into the whole casino gambling thing, you could go off and go do that. They have restaurants there. Uh, it's basically the closest thing you can get to like a Vegas casino without having to go to Vegas and the drinks are much cheaper. Um, so down in the kind of first level bar, they have like a live band and the one band wrapped up and there was kind of like a 30 minute intermission until the next band showed up and they played like six Michael Jackson songs in a row. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. And then we went upstairs to the 14th floor. Um, there's a club up there and one side of the club is total windows. So you can look out and see all of kind of Phoenix and Scottsdale. It's super cool. Um, I will insert some photos here of the evening.
it was a great time. And um, my actual birthday is this Monday, the 26th. I turned 33. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, it's weird to think I'm 33. Will be. Um, but it's not like you can stop it. So I fully embrace it. And what else took Irwin to the vet yesterday? I had posted on my Instagram at stitching and sequins. Irwin was riding shotgun head out of his carrier. So he did not want his head to be fully in the carrier. So I said, okay, fine. Um, so I got him in the car and just unzipped it and he rode like this to the vet. Um, so I, I think he's only been to the vet like five times in his whole life. Um, he's strictly indoors. He's eight years old, so he hasn't been... The only medical problem he did have um, a couple years ago, I think it was due to traveling and maybe just me being gone, um, he started having blood in his urine. So we switched his food, and so now he's on this prescription food, um, and they said that I couldn't get any until he came in for an exam, which was totally fine. Um, because I noticed a couple months ago, he had developed a lump along his spine. And to me, it was fatty feeling like a lympho lymphoma, 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 lipoma, I swear I'm not drinking yet, lipoma, um, which is just made up of like oil and grease and fat. Um, it wasn't hard to the touch. It was very like malleable. It didn't bug him when I messed with it. Um, I worked at a hospital about 10 years ago. So I kind of know a little bit of the jargon and what to look for. Um, so they needle aspirate and aspirated it. And yeah, sure enough, it was just a lipoma. Um, they measured it. He's got a cool little shaved spot, um, got his food. He was Mr. Social. He just didn't give a shit while he was there. No. And then riding home, I didn't even put him in the carrier. I just carried him out under my arm and he just sat in the front seat the whole way home. It was hilarious. So we used to, when he was a kitten and my parents lived in Southern California, um, Joe and I would drive here to Arizona to Southern California and we would bring him with us. This was before the boys were born. Um, and he loved car rides. He'd sit up along kind of around the headrest um, or like on the console. It was, it was great. So I'm kind of thinking, Hey Joe, when you go pick the boys up, you should take Irwin for a ride. I think he would totally love that. So Irwin is all well. Um, I think he's sleeping on the bed while he's doing his own thing. Um, but other than that, I have been, um, make sure it's still recording, been super busy with um, the attic. If you are not a part of my Facebook group, it's Attic Needlework Last Chance. Um, and I have about nine people that are requesting to be a part of the group, but you need to scroll down and answer the question. That's the only way I'm letting people in. Um, because if you can't scroll down and see that there's a question you need to submit, then I'm kind of worried adding you into my group um, because I run it solely and there are rules. So if you have sent a request and you have not been um, joined, if I've not included you, go back to your request and answer the question. Um, but yeah, I've just been busy with the attic stuff, doing the live sales. Um, but yeah, none of, none of that will, will ever change. Um, so let's get to what I've been working on. Not a lot of stitching. I've been 
DP obsessed. DP obsessed. I stitch in the evening um, when Joe and I are watching Netflix. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of diamond painted, painting obsessed. That's okay. You can have more than one hobby, okay? So I don't want the hate mail. You can have more than one hobby, okay? There are plenty of people out there that stitch, scrapbook, card making, maybe you knit or crochet, okay? No one gets on their people's asses. But then the moment a cross stitcher wants to do diamond painting, oh my God, the whole world ends. Right, Danielle? You know what I'm talking about. So I decided to pull out the primitive hair now and then. I don't know, it's an easy stitch, large blocks of color. Um, and I'm really not that far off from a finish. So here is where I'm at on her. I filled in the rest of her arm, this section here with the top of her dress and some of her sleeve. I'm really not wanting to move the Q snap, but I may have to eventually to get the rest of her sleeve. Um, I absolutely love this. I have one flower like up in her head, up in her hair. I know that I need to fill in. Um, that's the length that is, let's see here. Yeah. So that is how long it is. That's the end. And then the dress matches up. So, um, I'm only doing the half and half. So as you can see, I don't have, I mean, it's solidly stitched, but I really don't have a lot more to do. Um, so yeah, this is what I have been working on. I love the skeleton and I love just the colors of it, um, especially that rose. I think the rose is really, really cool. Um, not sure yet how I want to frame it up. Um, I would definitely enter this into the state fair next year. Um, and since the damn picnic basket kicked my ass this year, I got to think of something good for this. Um, now, I know this would totally win if I stitched a little part that covers her up. But yeah, no, I have no interest in doing that. So I got to come up with a cool way. Um, I don't know why you don't know who's calling. So yeah, I got to come up with a cool kind of unique way to finish her off. Um, she kind of screams, burn me. but I'm not 100% sure, not sure, not sure on that. Um, I have a finish. Oh, speaking of the fair, let's cover up my address. I got my big whopping check for $5. Be jealous. I'll try not to spend it all on a new pair of shoes. Um, but this was, yeah, for my first place win on what did I win first place on? Good intentions. Good intentions is what, yeah. Okay, so my finish though. This is Bubble Bubble by, let's write it on the back. Good Flora Stitch Ward. I will link 
um, the store down below. I know Audrey Stitchy Witch 42 is doing this. I want to say someone else as well. I totally enabled them. I'm taking full credit. Um, so here it is from afar. This frame I got from um, at home. They have like a ton of frames. Stores amazing. Um, and so I will show the stitching up first and then I will describe my framing process. I love the cauldron. I love the cracks in it. Um, the fire coming up and then there's um, the back stitches bubble. Um, and I love the hand dropping the potion or whatever. So called for colors. I stitched this on it's probably 32, two over two. Um, instead of using, no, I guess I did use all the called for. I did. So framing, I thought I would burn it. Um, but then I decided that I wanted to try this kind of fraying technique. Um, so I just randomly, you know, just took a pair of scissors, cut it down because I had, um, I don't know, maybe five inches off on the side and I wasn't going to fray all of that. So cut it down and then um, frayed it left the edges that you can obviously see. Uh, and then I made sure that those were even all the way up. So I kind of just eyeballed those with a pair of scissors if any of them got long. And then what is, is that, what it is um, attached to is actually the back of this frame itself. I loved that it was this tan cardboard looking. Um, I just used a little spray adhesive sh sh on the back of the stitched piece and eyeballed it on the back of the frame, popped it in, took a piece of um, scrapbook paper and wrote the designer, the title, date, my name, attached it to the back, boom, done. That's it. Um, so I can either hang it if I want, or um, there's also a stand on the back. So now I just need to find a place to put this. But I love this. I love how it turned out. It was a cute little stitch. Um, the chart was super, super easy to read. You know, you could customize this any way you want. I know Audrey did not... I don't know all the changes that she did, but she did not backstitch the bubble into um, like the cauldron coming out. So, but I love the cauldron and the back stitching to make it look all um, cracked. So, yeah. So I love this. So I got this framed up. Last video, I forgot to show you guys um, this finish, um, I had finished this, I need to write on the back, a few months ago. Um, this is palmistry from, give me a sec, fairy wool in the woods. I stitched this up, um, I changed the called for colors, um, but they're all, they're close enough. Um, and then I wanted to kind of grunge it up a little more. So I threw it in coffee afterwards and I wanted to get this, um, there we go. I wanted to get this all framed up as well. Cause it, I just had it, um, hanging in my closet. 
So any pieces that I don't have framed up, um, like that Barbara Anna series, New World, I have three of the five complete. I have them on um, hangers with the clips, mostly like the ones you get for like kids clothing. Um, what else do I have? Plague Doctor, because um, I need to get the McKenna Plague Doctor one stitched up. So I had this one hanging up and wanted to do something with it. And I thought, let me go through my closet of frames. And this worked perfectly. Um, looks like the Y is cut off, but it actually isn't. And so this was a lot harder to try to frame up just because it was circular. Um, but I love it in this frame and I have it hanging up on my collection of finished pieces in my office. So I just need to remember to add a little tag on the back for that. Um, oh, another kind of side note. I am the US distributor for X Stitch Magazine. So let me actually get these all organized. I help out um, Mr. X Stitch himself, Jamie, with his magazine. Um, he has been sending them to me here in Arizona, all of the U.S. orders, and then I take them to the post office and get them sent out. Um, and then I've also had people message me looking for specific issues, and if I do have them with me, I send them out. Um, and then um, any stores that have outstanding orders with Jamie, I box them up and send those out as well. So he always sends me a few extra. So for those of you that have not heard, X Stitch Magazine is going completely digital. Now, there are some of you that actually, you know, we all love the tangible magazine, be it, you know, this or just cross stitch or whatever. And then we also love our paper charts. Some are PDF, but anytime I can get like the hard copy, I'll do that. So don't fret because there will be an annual issue of X Stitch Magazine. Um, details on that later. Um, but you can go to X, X, X Stitch Mag com. I will put the link down below and you can sign up for the magazine and getting it in digital form. Um, I know Jamie wants to add more content, maybe some um, videos integrated into the piece itself, into the uh, issue itself when he sends it out. Um, so I'll go over to xstitchmag.com and sign up so you can be um, all ready for the next issue that will be coming out. Issue six is going to be mixtape. Um, and there's some really great things that are going to be in that magazine. So these are all of the hard copies that I have in stock that I have. So um, I have one issue of Space. This was issue three. I have a couple issues of issue four. This is the green toilet issue. Um, and if you either check out, um, I know... Um, Benny Sichi Michelle has um, done flip throughs of some of these issues. So go back into her video history and 
look at issues three, four, and five. And if any of those interest you, then shoot me a message um, on Instagram. Um, that'll be the easiest way to get a hold of me, and we'll figure out price and shipping. And then I also have a couple issues of the heroes and villains. This is the double issue that was extremely popular. So yeah, if you are interested in any of those issues, hit me up and we'll figure out something. So, um, Next, thrift store slash generous, generous gifts. Um, thrift store a couple weeks ago. Um, found this necklace for $5 and it is gorgeous. I absolutely love it. Let's see if I can actually get it to... There we go. I love the detail around the piece. And on the other side, boom, it's a mirror. Blah. So yeah, I love this. And $5, yes. I'm gonna have to cut that off, but I'm gonna wear it now. But yeah, I love it. I totally leave the there. Okay. Oh, and it just hangs at the perfect spot, doesn't it? Um, thrift store this past week when I was at the shop. These will be going to Miss Arlene Cohen. I saw this box in the back by the afghans and hand crocheted or hand knitted napkins or whatever, kind of like the linens. Opened it up and I had been talking to Arlene at the same exact time and I sent her some close up photos. And yeah, these are cloth coasters. And they are lace. Is this lacing? Arlene, you're probably yelling at me right now. Um, I hope that's, yeah. They are hand laced all the way around. She had actually seen. Let's see, where is it? Right there. She had seen this little line on a photo I had taken, and this is actually where it starts and stops. You would not get this um, like on a, on a machine. So there are, Arlene, you actually get quite a bit in here. There are eight of them in here. And I'm sending them all to Arlene. This one has like this kind of hashtag pattern in the middle. I guess they all do. But five bucks, really? Robinsons of Los Angeles. I don't know, maybe this isn't the original box, but five bucks. Yes. Yes. Um, also thrift store find, you know, I just watched Michelle's video this morning. Um, BS. That's what I call her. No one else can call her that. And she was talking about her thrift store estate finds. She came across this Awesome, gorgeous green um, scissor frog keeper thing. Um, again, at the thrift store, 
And I was talking to her and I sent her a picture and I said, I think I can use this as a tree, a tree frog. Did I say that? A scissor frog or something to hold your scissors. Um, and she's like, hell yes. And it has a lid. Bitch, get it. And I said, it's 12 bucks. She's like, get it anyway. Stop being cheap. So, um, can totally add them and they totally work. And it has a lid so I can put my drugs in there. Cops won't even know. Has this lid. I love the ember color. It's gorgeous. Um, don't know if this is what it was used for. Highly unlikely. Um, but anytime you see any sort of dish with whole cut out decorative along the sides and you can throw a pair of scissors guess what now it fits scissors so this is getting ridiculous because now I feel like anytime I see one of these I need to buy them I don't know if like BS and I are in some sort of like competition like who can have the most when they die um, I think she totally has me beat though, because wherever she goes, people had them and they're dying and she's scooping them all up. Also, these trivets that she keeps finding, I can't find any of the damn trivets she uses. Maybe here in Arizona, we don't use trivets. Maybe it's just a Pacific Northwest sort of a thing. I don't know. Uh, watch now next week I go and I'm going to hit like the trivet jackpot. Um, oh, I forgot the bag. Oh, yeah, because it's in my office. Um, Lolly, Lolly Pop Stitches, she's coming to my retreat in April. Hot dog. And she's in the U.S. right now going crazy at Disney. She sent me the... Don't you just love it when you get gifts and get the gifts are like totally personalized for you? I don't know. They just mean so, so much. So she had gone to the Frida Kahlo ex exhibition um, and she picked up some items for me. These are, this is the coolest postcard I have ever seen. Um, it's an outfit of Frida's and it's cross-stitched. Guys, look at this. I would totally freaking rock this. Bright ass. Um, this is similar to the same exhibition that I went to here in Arizona. They had some of her clothes, um, on display. Uh, with Frida, Frida with Olmec figurine. 39. Here is a necklace that belonged to her silver enamel, opal, and jadeite. Um, that's gorgeous. Let's see if I can. There we go. There we go. And that's just how her style was. It was just big, bold, clunky jewelry, but it was totally amazing. She was not afraid of color or textures or layering pieces. This is blue satin blouse. This is um, called self-portrait with necklace. Oil on metal. I'd love to go to Mexico and go to the Blue House, that it's called, is uh, where she lived. And this is self-portrait um, oil on hardboard. So her artwork isn't for everybody, but Lolly appreciates it, and I appreciate it, and I know a lot of other people do. And if not for her artwork, then just what she kind of endeared during her life. Um, 
Lolly also sent me the a tote bag with her face on one side and then the name of the exhibition on the back. Um, so actually, Lolly, that is my new attic um, bag that I take to and from the attic and it's stuffed with um, items right now. Otherwise, I would get it. Um, so thank you so much, Lolly. I really appreciated that. And that came on a perfect day. How is that that that's possible? You get stitchy kindness or not stitchy kindness on the days that it's so needed. I don't know how that works out, but it works out some way. You know what else is a great, fantastic gift that is totally up my alley and not Frida related? When people send me old medical stuff. Margot Howard, oh, she was at a, it wasn't a thrift store. Was it just like a, like not a garage sale? I'm totally, Mark, was it like a rummage market thing? Anyway, she came across this and knew she had to get it for me. What is it? It's a automobile First aid kit made in the U.S. Oh, did I get everything that was included? So I didn't get scissors. Tourniquet. I got the tourniquet. Um, gauze. I got some banding. Adhesive tape. Surgical gauze. Um, yeah, this thing is freaking amazing. My tetna shot is not up to date, but I don't care. I'll still touch it. So, um, even Joe thought it was cool. Like, I have to be very selective on what I put into the medical bathroom. Um, it already freaks him out if he goes in there to go pee. Um, and Austin is on the back of the toilet. Um, Austin is my fake leg. Not my fake leg. I bought him in Austin, Texas. So, this will be displayed proudly in my medical bathroom. And I freaking love it. Um, I opened it up and I died. I was laughing and shocked and <sighs> kid in a candy store, give me some medical supplies. So, um, done, you know, got some gauze, which I know they're not medical supplies, but they're, they are medical supplies. I love the smell on them, knowing I'm probably going to get cancer in like five years from this smell. So thanks, Margo, um, which will be totally fine. I'll cut it out, put it in a jar and put it in my medical bathroom. So adhesive tape. Um, this is burn lay It is ointment for burns. Now, the box it doesn't, it, it's like it's been wet or is wet. There's almost, you get like this. I don't want to use the word moist because it's not moist. And moist is just one of those bad words. It's not damp. Um, but you can feel that it's, it's a little moist. Okay. So I open this up and it's like the ointment has actually oozed out of the um, container. I think so. it had been used, but I think over the years, it's just kind of seeped out of the little container. Um, so, and then it's like, it has soaked up in the cardboard. Um, but yeah. Burn a lay for burns. The writing on the back is super, super tiny and smudge, so can't read that. Got some um, surgical gauze. Um, and this was opened. Love to know what somebody had to use this for. So, got some surgical gauze. This will actually be the first, like, actual. No, I have a tin in there, I guess. That's 
with some medical something. But this is like my first packages of medical stuff, which I totally love. Um, twist type tourniquet. Oh, I want to try this so bad. Um, so let me know. I love this. Look at this. So you get the tourniquet part and then you twist it. So then you thread it through a piece of wood and then you just twist it. So there's no tying. Um, <laughs> twist type tourniquet. Um, latex free sterile adhesive bandages. I wonder if they're still sterile. I mean, they're not open, but so I got some bandages. Then the best things, which Margo, them just being like rolling around. I was actually really surprised. You see how I'm like holding, um, that they didn't open up. So this first one, I love why because there's no marking on it. <laughs> what is it? I have no freaking idea. It's not clear. It almost looks like really watered down pee. Um, I haven't, I don't even want to crack the seal on it. Um, there we go. There's that little uh, sticker left on it, but it says, uh, 225 milliliters. Five an inch. Now my eye's probably going to be infected. Um, your guess is as good as mine. Maybe some vodka, like you get hurt. You need to take a quick little shot of vodka. Not that this would be enough. Um, but yeah, probably something super cool. So I love that. The best though, you ready? Look at this. Now, hold on. See this? Um, probably gonna try to butcher this. Mirtha iolate. Um, basically it's like an antiseptic. Um, Yes, it's really that color. It's an antiseptic. Um, for minor skin abrasions and cuts, apply directly. Um, Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm seeing if there's what other words I can... But I love it. I love the, you can still read the words on the bottle. I love that I can see what it is. Um, so I actually did some research. Now, I don't know how old this kit is. Um, but I'm going to think that it's probably earlier then I'm going to say probably in the 80s, okay? Now, why do I say that? Because this merthiolate in the 90s was banned by the FDA because they found out that there was mercury in this. Um, so... And that use of this would cause poisoning. Um, I freaking love that I have this because of that. Um, I bet how much, I wonder how much I could sell this for. Knowing that I, I got some of this with probably some mercury in it. Um, so I will take medical stuff, anything from a twist type tourniquet to actual bottles with liquid in them. You know where to send them. So Margo, thank you so, so much. I got an absolute kick out of this going through it. Um, Joe even thought it was, Joe thought it was pretty cool. And then when I told him about the antiseptic, 
He's like, we should try it out. I was like, great, let's go. Let's go, uh, I'm gonna wash my hands. Let's go make a cut. How, do you have a cut and let's pour it on and see if it works. Talk amongst yourselves. So, I'm trying to think what else before I move on. It's gorgeous outside today. It's blue sky. And it's supposed to be high 60s or low 70s. I don't know. I'm not planning to go out anywhere. So, because after this, I'm taking my shorts off. People, I'm taking them off. Oh, another thing from the thrift store. I bought two of these. They are wood, faux wood panelings from, I think the one sticker said Hobby Lobby. So here are the hooks. I bought two of these. They were two bucks each. I thought this would be really, really cool to... Um, attach a stitched piece. Um, so what? I have no idea, but um, I love the raised sections of some of them. So yeah, buy two of those for two bucks. Um, okay, so next. Um, I'm going to talk about my big news and then I will talk about diamond painting. Um, so my big news, I am just opening up my laptop for some, um, uh, make sure I cover all of these specifics. Okay. Still recording. Um. So I have hinted on my Instagram about this big news. No, I'm not pregnant. God, no. Um, Joe and I are getting a divorce, so he's not going to be available. So big news. What is it? I am opening up my own retail online store. Now. You say, that's great, but a ton of people have those. True, having to do with stitching, but mine is different. How so? I have quite the knack for finding um, truck, um, estate sales um, regarding stitching items. If you guys remember a few months back, I bought a huge estate um, of stitching stuff uh, through Facebook Marketplace. And just last weekend, I found another um a state that I was able to, or a state lot that I was able to purchase, and I did. So through those two huge buys, I have probably close to 250 to 300 stitching items. So I'm still working on getting them up, but the majority of the items are up. So the last few weeks, I have been busy putting together a website and talking to um, other people that have online stores, getting their feedback. Huge thank you to Julie Golf Coast. Just check out her 
online store. I will link it down below. She has been a huge um, amount of help and um, I know I couldn't get some of the things answered without your help. So thank you so much, Julie. So um, I, let me pull this up. I hope to, I want to, I will, let's just set a date. I will be live. I will publish the site this Friday. Um, let's go noon, my time, Arizona. Um, now, the name. You can find my website, 1884stitchery.com. That will be me, and I will make my website go live noon on this Friday. I don't know what day. Let's look it up. Friday the 23rd, noon, Arizona time. Go on to 1884stitchery.com and you will see everything that I have available for sale. Now, 1884 Stitchery is not your average cross-stitch shop. I specialize in finding new and gently used designs, which have may have been long forgotten. Um, about or just plain hard to find. I never know what I will discover, so check back often as inventory changes. Inventory, I guess, will be changing quite often because a lot of what I have, I have one of. Um, so if you are on and you see something, snag it. Um, so... 1884 Stitchery, story behind the name. I was wanting a name that would last me for years down the line, that had a meaning, that had some sort of family connection. So I wanted to go way back, go way, way back. And I pulled out the genealogy book of my grandparents on my mom's side. That is where the Italian comes from. So I was reading through the genealogy book, trying to think if, if a word or a phrase would inspire me and kind of lead me down a path to get an idea. Um, and so it, the book starts off talking about um, Michelle Palladini. That was um, my great grandpa's name. Um, talks about him growing up in Italy. And then it switches over to Ottavia. Um, which would later then be his wife or my great grandmother um, and talks about her upbringing. So grand it, the tense is um, my mom's cousin went to Italy and did all of this research. So to the lady that put this genealogy book to her, it was grandma and grandpa. Um, so it's, there's a sentence in the book that says grandma's great grandmother taught her to knit when she was four or five years old while sitting on the hillside, watching the sheep. They took polenta and cheese with them for lunch while in the mountains, they also gathered wild chestnuts and while tending the sheep. I loved just that picture that came to my head when I read that and kind of continued reading. So I'm going to show you because I do have a picture of them. Um, so these are 
Um, I've talked about him often, Papa. He is my grandpa, my mom's dad. These are his parents, um, Michelle and Otavia. So her grandma taught her to knit on a hillside in Italy when she was four or five years old. Now, the knitting has stuck with my great grandmother um, because I have, or let's just say any, say any hand arts really stuck with her throughout her life. Um, I have an apron that she made um, hanging in my office. I have um, her knitting needles, quite a selection of her knitting needles um, that I have and a pair of socks that she was needing one complete and then one was about halfway done. So here, something that she was shown in Italy by her grandmother stuck with her for her entire life, basically. I like to think that that's where I get my love of cross-stitch. And I wanted to incorporate her story, her memory into the store somehow. 1884 is the year that she was born. Um, I'm kind of upset that it wasn't 1885 because then 1985 was the year I was born and it would have been exactly 100 years. Um, but... 1884 is the year that my great grandma was born. And that's what I have decided to go with. Um, I called up my grandpa. I called up both my grandparents, but talked to my grandpa and explained the meaning behind it and kind of got the blessing from him as, as you would think. And he loves it. Um, and, and thought that it was a wonderful kind of ode to his mom. So 1884 Citri, um, is what my business will be called. And I love it. And I was shooting off names of other ideas to a group of friends. And I thank you guys so, so much for giving me your input on those. Um, because I don't think without, having you guys to kind of bounce ideas off of, I would have gone down this road. So thank you guys so, so much. Love you all. Um, so I need to kind of write up a summary like that onto the website, um, kind of under the about section. So I still have that to do um, kind of the last final little touches on the website before I publish it and go live this Friday at noon. I am super, super excited, um, but kind of scared at the same time. I have, you know, had the, I'm, I'm blessed that I'm in the opportunity that when I come across lots of cross-stitch things that I am able to afford them and can buy them. I know that not a lot of people are in that same kind of boat, um, but I love that I can purchase them and then get them out to people that I know will stitch them. The recent lot that I bought um, was from um, a woman and her mom had just died earlier this year. And her friends had come and kind of picked out things that they had wanted. There was items that were taken to kind of her, I don't want to say it was a guild, but kind of cross-stitch knit group. Um, and then... I was kind of like the last person to kind of then take what I wanted. So um, it was just great 
listening to the mom and how she stitched and she stitched basically up until the very end. Um, and I said, you know, that's one of the things that as a stitcher being 32, I have quite a stash and the older that us stitchers get, we want to know where these items are going to go. Um, be it friends or you're just afraid that family members aren't going to take the time and try to get the stitching items out to other stitchers and it'll just be put in a box and donated or just thrown away. And the daughter was like, I don't stitch, but I know my mom wouldn't want that. And I said, that's perfect because I would want my items to go to people that will appreciate them. And maybe we'll stitch them or not, or just give them a loving home, regardless if they're stitched or not. So um, I have organized and reorganized and reorganized all the charts and everything um, to be the simplest um, on the website, I have it broken down by designers. Um, and there are multiple tabs up at the top. So some of the designers that will be available for you to look for, I have the Good Huswife charts. I have a huge selection of the Scarlet Letters. Um, charts and kits with silk floss and fabric, kits with all the th all the cotton threads and fabric, and I have it all detailed and written out. Um, carriage house samplings, Hearts Content, the Exemplar, Barrack Samplers, Prairie Schoolers, Birds of a Feather, Hester's sister, I have Mill Hill kits that I think are on the older side. Um, Lavender and Lace, Told in a Garden, Butternut Road. I also have an Others tab. And then I have books as well. Um, and I have quite a few of out-of-print charts mixed in. Um, so just make sure you kind of give everything a good look. Um, some books that I have... Um, sampler and antique needlework books that um, have been hard to find in the back in the past. Um, and then I also have a couple Darlene Ownstein books, The Proper Stitch, um, and one of them is actually signed. So um, I am just super excited to hear, you know, the feedback and the reception that this may or may not get. Um, but I love the idea of when I do come across these estate lots um, to then bring those old charts out of print charts that I come across and get them out to people that are going to enjoy them. So I will write the name down below. I can't put a link obviously yet, but check out on this Friday, the 23rd at noon, Arizona time, um, 1884stitchery.com. Uh, let's talk diamond painting. Shall we? I come crazy with the diamond painting. I ordered two more kits the other day. One is a gift for Ayrton. He is football obsessed and his favorite team is Minnesota Vikings. So I found a small little like 25 by 30 size um, kit on AliExpress. And um, that should arrive well before Christmas. And I could hopefully be able to do that up. And then I, what else did I order? I ordered another one. I will insert a picture of it here. 
I love it. Um, I love the gold, the lips of it. It kind of has like a Danielle vibe to it a little bit. So I love that. That will be coming. And I get the majority of my kits either off AliExpress or um, Amazon. Just make sure you do the filter for Prime if you have it. And I can get... I've gotten diamond paintings in like two days. No problems at all. Totally fine. So let me show you what I have finished diamond painting wise. This one I finished up. Was this last weekend? I want to say it took me about a week. Took me less than a week to do it. Um, I don't keep track of how long it's taken. So this was actually off of, um, make sure I get enough light. This I found off of Amazon. This is a tapestry from William Morris. Um, it is called Woodpecker in Fruit Tree. Um, and I love how this turned out. I have yet to find a spot. It'll probably go in my office. Um, now, if it was a larger size, which they did not, um, they did not offer, you'd be able to read the writing up here. And I know I have on Instagram, if you go on Instagram, um, read, I've looked it up and written it out. So yeah, super, super sparkly. Um, what was kind of cool, not all of the drills, the diamonds were sparkly. Some even had like a matte finish to them. So um, yeah, I loved how this turned out. Uh, I had this frame already. This was a thrift store frame. Um, this kind of... I don't know, natural canvas part pops out if you want it about an inch bigger, but it fits perfectly with the insert. Um, and I finished it up just like my night sky one, the kind one that kind of looks like um, a galaxy. So I have this, then sprayed adhesive on the glass and have this mounted on the glass and then popped in. So no glass on any of these. And I love how this turned out. So that is Woodpecker in Fruit Tree by William Morris. And there's actually a couple of, I think there's three of his tapestries that you can do in diamond painting via Amazon. This one I finished up in about four days. Um, I already told Letitia about it, so nobody told Letitia. Um, it's a peacock. This was on Amazon as well. I'm trying to remember. I think this was like less than 10 bucks. Maybe it was like 12 bucks. Um, got plenty of the drills though. The canvas was perfect. Um, and this like totally sparkles like crazy. So, um, yeah, love this though. So I need to get a frame for this. I just need to probably just go into my closet of frames and figure it out. But yeah, once I get done with these, then I get my rolling pin out and just roll the hell out of them to make sure they're all stuck down nicely. The one I am currently working on, um, I got this off of Amazon as well. This is a 30 by 40. Now, what does that mean? Is that inches? No, that's centimeters. It is Marilyn Monroe. And I am making this for um, a friend of mine. 
Um, she loves Marilyn. She has a like time the Time magazine that she was on front of. Um, she has a copy of that that's framed up in a frame in her bathroom. I had shown her this image. Um, and she was like, oh, I should get that to diamond paint, blah, blah, blah. And I thought, well, I'll just do it for her. Um, I know it has the, the plastic on it, but you get the idea. So I think this is great to detail for 30 by 40. And it's been so much fun to work on. So, um, there we go. I kind of am going by whatever. The thing about the clear plastic, then I can kind of do one color at a, at a time. Um, because I don't do any sort of little containers. So this is the dining table. We don't kitchen table. We don't eat at this. We just eat at the island. So this has kind of been this table. I've kind of taken over my diamond painting and it has pull out drawers on each end. So I stash. So this is how the packets come. Obviously, if there's not a lot in here, I know I can open up this whole bag, pour it into a tray and probably not even use half of these and fill up the whole canvas. And then you always have more. So Everyone does it differently though. I just work out of the bags. So right now, for example, I have a bag open um, and these are like a brown color and I just have them open and resting in this drawer. I have two huge bags of black. So I'm waiting, I'm using, I'm gonna do the black glass. I'm gonna do everything else though. Um, and I've gotten so many extra beads from the woodpecker, the peacock, the um, galaxy-ish looking one that I've been keeping them. I just put them in a bag. I've been keeping them. Do you know what I'm going to use these for? Pillow finishes. So I can add these into my pillow finishes in case I don't want to do rice. I can use the extra diamond painting drills for pillow finishes. So I love though how Miss Marilyn is coming out. Um, but yeah, I still have all that background that you see without any of the drills are black. Um, I'll flip this lower section so you can see that. Um, so yeah, all of this here is all black. Um, but yeah, I love how she's coming out. And I think it's going to be a great surprise. Um, another one that I have that I really, really want to start, but I want to get Marilyn done first. Um, this was actually off of, um, AliExpress and this came the other day. Here's a loose one. Um, I think I'm more of a square diamond painter than a round. Um, I like that the squares give you that mosaic tile look, whereas the circles, you're gonna have space in between them. Um, yeah, you're gonna have space in between them. And to me, that just drives my OCD crazy. So I found this one and I love that I could get it in squares. You go on AliExpress and you can find a lot of stores. They give you all the different size options. Plus, if you want um, squares or rounds, um, but you have to be very, very careful because a lot of them can be misleading. So read, 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 read. Now, um, 
I will just show you, I will insert a picture of what this canvas looks like. I love it. You guys, come on. It's two, two skeletons in love. This is going in my medical bathroom for sure when I'm done. Um, and the canvas on this is fantastic. I've learned so much from Danielle's videos. When I got suckered into it, I went back. Danielle, I've watched my own. Um, so here is what the canvas looks like. Super, super clear. Um, I think the detail is going to be amazing. And this is a 40 by 40. And... Here are all of the diamonds. I've already done inventory. That's what Danielle has taught you. Okay. So I have all the diamonds here. Um, another basic toolkit. But I keep, I've just been using the same pen on all of these. So yeah. I want to get started on this. So this might be like, if I can, this might be what I work on. Friday after I publish my website and I'm waiting eagerly for people to either purchase or not purchase items. Um, 115, you guys are doing an awesome video. I have 115. I think that is it. Yes. Um, I will be switching my, I still have, um, items for sale up on sincere stitches on Amazon. Um, those I will be slowly moving over into, um, the website. I want to get those all transitioned over by Friday. Um, but since your stitches on Amazon will still be up for the time being, um, right now there is no fee to keep it up or to let it go. So um, I do have a Sincere Stitches Facebook group um, or page on Facebook, which I will be switching over to 1884 Stitchery. Um, so if you would want to join that, Look up Sincere, S-I-N-C-E-R-E, -E, Stitches, and follow. And then I will be um, renaming that and kind of changing up all of that. Um, so you guys can see if and when I do any sales or just photos of things I'm able to come across. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I will get back to you on those. If you're interested in any of the X-Stitch magazines that I have available, hit me up on Instagram and spread the word, people, to all your friends and family. 1884 Stitchery will be going live this Friday, the 23rd at noon. I'm so excited. Um, I think it can be big. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really excited about it. Hope you guys have a fantastic Thanksgiving. Um, since I will be here by myself, maybe I'll do a live Instagram video. We can diamond paint and chit chat. And... Maybe you'll just see, watch me eat like a pumpkin pie by myself. I'm not really sure. Thank you guys so much for always watching, following, liking, subscribing, and commenting. Until next time. Bye, guys.